everybody. I would, I'd like to start today with uh, some prepared remarks and even some questions that I've thought of, and then I'll open it up for a few questions. That's, uh, that works with everybody. There's too many things up here. So quite a bit has been written about what could be characterized as friction between the mayor of Nashua and the chief of police. It is this situation that brings me here today. Let me also be very clear. I remain steadfast in my support and my pride of the men and women of the National Police Department. I believe that this situation, dredging up old reports, leaking information, and backroom whispers, was the work of a small number of people in positions of authority. Their goal was to intimidate me enough that I would stop asking questions and objecting to their proposals. It did not and will not work. Let me say up front that it is not my intention to address line by line the various documents that have been generated in recent days. You have access to all the same information that I do, and whether more of this material will become available in the future, I don't know. I am not the author of any of it, nor for the most part am I the subject. I am also not saying whether I think this material is important. Everyone can decide that for themselves. But what I don't believe my commenting on it further will resolve the situation, clarify it, or even improve it in the slightest bit. I will say three things on this specific topic. I stand by all of my previous statements. I stand by my husband David as a person of unimpeachable integrity without hesitation or reservation. And I will not let the endless discussion of this material distract me from doing the job which the people of Nashua elected me to do and then re-elected me to do. And that is to proudly serve as their mayor of our city of Nashua. At this stage, I am less concerned about what happened than why it happened. How could it be that relations between two key city officials could become so strained that it could devolve into intimidation and character assassination? And most importantly for the city of Nashua, what can we do to correct this unhealthy situation? That is the most important question and that is what I intend to address today. At its core, whatever problems exist between the mayor and the chief of police, are all about that most basic of municipal concerns, taxpayers' money. City budgets are always tight, and they always will be. If they weren't tight, then we, we would be overtaxing our citizens. Tough choices must always be made, and the chief of police will naturally be especially interested in city spending that benefits his department. The mayor will always be concerned for public safety. At the same time, the mayor must be just as concerned with fire protection, education, public works, and all of the other essential functions that people expect from the city. This difference of priority and focus is, I believe, the origin of the problems that have brought us here today. While the public first became aware of this tension after my State of the City this past February, the clash between our two perspectives began soon after I took office in mayor in 2008 and it has been persistent since that time. Our differences have included basic things, like what kind of information that I should be made aware of, such as major crimes, homicides, and crime trends, along with requests by me for an increased presence in the downtown, and to work together to find a way to close a known drug house. But most of our conflict has been over dollars. We've locked horns on the police department's budget levels, the cost to the city of police details, payment for dental benefits, police overtime, the number of annual work days for officers, and other fundamental elements of the budgeting process. These have not been trivial disagreements. Our differences have often had a taxpayer imp impact of hundreds of thousands of dollars and even millions. Protecting his budget is critical to the chief of police, and as your mayor protecting the budget for the city as a whole and the impacts on taxpayers is critical to me. Time and time again, I met with the police commission at their monthly meetings trying to come to terms on budgets, overtime, and union contracts. Are these differences of opinion over budget priorities and city spending important enough to create the level of friction that exists between the mayor and the chief of police? 
They shouldn't be, but clearly they are. In my experience, making budget choices is hard, but generally constructive. Each department within city government has certain priorities and things they want to do. Only the mayor has to maintain a balance of those competing interests when putting together the city budget for review and approval by the Board of Aldermen. I have had disagreements with other department heads, boards, and commissions, but as a rule, together, we have always been able to work through them constructively for the common good of the people of Nashville. My disagreements with the Chief of Police have been the exception to that rule, and they have led us to where we are today. This tension that exists between me and Chief Susing that resulted in these circumstances cannot be permitted to continue. Each of us has a job to do, and each of those jobs is important. It is my hope that by meeting more often and sharing insights and information more openly and in good faith, we can bridge the divide which has come to exist. It is my intention to propose to Chief Susing that we again put in place a structure which will accomplish this goal. If I am not on his Christmas card list, I'll get over it. If I'm not on his speed dial, we'll still have a problem. Repairing the working relationship between the mayor and the chief of police will take time, work, and commitment. In spite of the circumstances, I am pledging to the people of Nashville that I am dedicated to taking that time to do that work and to honor that commitment. I have a proven reputation of being able to work in a civil manner regardless of the situation. Let's remember, Nashville is important to everyone. The people who live here and the people who work here. We are a model city in many ways and a source of inspiration and pride throughout our region. Nashville needs and will continue to have clear-eyed leadership. As your mayor, I pledge to continue to always put the best interests of our city first, despite the distractions of petty politics or backroom intrigue. Imagine that a reporter may say, Mayor, how do you respond to what's written on line X of document Y? And I'm gonna tell you, just based on my remarks, I think it's in the best interest of the city to move forward. We released those documents because we had nothing to hide and nothing to fear. Somebody leaked the existence of those documents because they were interested in bullying and intimidating me. And that's not gonna work. I'm not gonna get down in the mud, line by line, quote by quote. The people of Nashua have elected me to do better than that. And I'm gonna do that. Mayor, how do you respond to reference X about your husband, David Lozo? David can answer his own questions or ask his representative to do so, or not answer them if he chooses not to. I stand by my husband. He is a remarkable man. And I look out at some of the faces that are here today supporting me, and I know that you know him. He's a good man. In a month from now, we'll be celebrating 31 years of marriage. I'm not ashamed of my husband. He's a good man that wants good things to happen, he cares about people, and he's honest, and he's my guy, and I'm keeping him. <laughs> Thank you. So how about, Mayor, while you're having this bat with Chief Susan, can you still effectively govern? The actions I'm taking here today, I believe, prove that. That personal attacks against me or other things are not going to distract me from the business that has to be done. Nashville is going to continue to get my very best attention and ability to the business at hand. And I think people are just sick and tired of politicians and leaders and people that are responsible for different budgets not figuring out how to play together and taking the easy way out and calling each other names. Not okay. Time to be done. I've always been on the high road. Those of you that are here today know that. Even in the worst of circumstances, that's where I tend to spend most of my time. I'm going to keep that up. That's what people expect from us, and that's what they're going to get. How about, Mayor, do you think there should be an examination, a review, or whatever, this or that piece of information on page X or Y? You know what? Any decisions about further investigations are going to be made by the authorities that are in a position to do so. Whatever they want to do, I will continue to act cooperatively with them. Mayor, do you have a grudge against the police department? You know, it's funny, and, I, and I've put a lot of thought into this, and actually I've put thought into it since 2008 when I started to have struggles. 
I grew up the daughter of a cop. My dad used to be the downtown beat cop. You know, and I, I have always been proud and felt safe and secure in knowing that law enforcement is out there for us. I spent 16 years in the legislature chairing subcommittees and committees on criminal justice and law enforcement. I've been an advocate. I have fingerprints on, on statutes all over the place at the State House, and many of you know that. I have always been their champion. I will continue to do that. I will continue to do that. Particularly some of the guys in Nashua that I've come to know and respect and consider friends. So Mayor, if Chief Susing responds cooperatively to your plan to improve communications and, relation, and relations, will that end the rancor between you? I hope it will. But I'm not under any disillusion that that's gonna be easy. It's not easy for either one of us. This started years ago over budgetary matters, and those budgetary matters aren't gonna go away. We're gonna to continue to have struggles over that. We're gonna to continue to struggle over limited resources that we think should be spent in different places. And I think that as long as resources remain scarce and the demands of our city needs remain high, those struggles are gonna exist. Mayor, do you believe that somebody ought to investigate somebody or else or for something that they may have said or done or written? I think that every person who's in a position of authority should act in a manner consistent with their duties and responsibilities. Not about whether they like somebody or they don't like somebody or whether they're angry or they're not. They should do what they're supposed to do. I think that when people have the awesome power of government and the awesome power to do some of the things that have been done, they should be very careful and they should make sure that they don't have any conflict of interest. Mayor, do you believe that this matter has tarnished the good name and reputation of the city of Nashville. No chance. No chance. Because just because things make newspaper headlines, nothing personal, it doesn't mean that it interferes with my ability to govern. Our city is strong, our people are proud, and they have a lot to be proud of. We've weathered an extremely tough recession, the worst since the Great Depression, and we came out of it with a AAA rating doing an $80 million road project, took charge of a water company, and we have so much more that needs to be done. Those who know me best know my devotion to our city, to our people, to our future, that won't end. It might take me a little longer to achieve some of the goals, particularly with some of our departments, but we'll make it, as long as we keep our head in the game and we don't lose focus of where we're headed. You guys are gonna love this one. Mayor, as reporters, we'd be a lot happier if you had come here today and took nasty personal shots at the people who you believe have acted against you. So we could go back to them and get them to take nasty personal shots back at you. Wouldn't you agree that an ongoing series of juicy slap fights would make better news copy than a sincere and specific pledge to be responsible and to govern? Now, I don't mean that as a derogatory way to you in the press. I just know the reality of how that plays out. And I think it's certainly more interesting than saying, hey, the mayor showed up today, took the high road, said we're going to figure this out, but there was nothing to hide, and was surprised to find a room full of supporters, by the way. Um, so I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to get in there. I'm not going to look line by line who said what, whether they were credible or whether they weren't. With that, I'll take a few more questions. Um, but if you are going to ask me to address things I've already given you an answer, I'm probably going to tell you I've already answered that question. So. Uh, you just indicated that the process or the, the pattern of intimidation and character assassination was the work of a small group of people in position of authority. Just to be clear, does that include the police chief? And as a follow-up, uh, you want to improve the, the process of communication. Why do you believe that this is the best form to facilitate that communication? This isn't the best forum to facilitate that communication. This just presents a forum because I have told people that I would have a public conversation about this and let people know what my perspective was and where I thought we should go moving forward. I will have a conversation with the chief and I can't help what I believe. I believe that that's what occurred here. People are gonna make that judgment call themselves. First part of the question. That was the first part of the question. Do, do you believe the chief was part of the small group of people in authority who- I do. Gordon? 
Mayor, it was first reported that uh, the case, initial case was closed, and now we hear that it was not closed, but suspended. Do you have any uh, information that would collaborate with you whether it was closed? And why it would be something you uh, indicated as suspended? We get told or you have to verify that? I don't. I have the same documents you have. Okay. Do you take issue with the fact that there was a investigation conducted because the chief has said they're going to investigate any complaint, criminal complaint that comes to their office, regardless of who that focus is? Or is it more that it was leaked to the public recently, as you pointed out, during uh, the budget negotiations? I think that it was uh, purposely leaked, and I think that that was designed, as I've said, to bully and intimidate me. And, you know, whether that was directly the chief or somebody else, I don't know the answer. And I just think it's unfortunate that we're in this circumstance. And as I said earlier, you know, my husband didn't have to release the documents. He chose to release the documents to demonstrate that we had nothing to hide or nothing to fear. And I, I mean, it is what it is. So you're okay with the investigation having been conducted? Well, why? I don't think I said I was okay with the investigation. Well, I, just, I want to be clear. Whether it was the leaking that, that uh, feel is the problem here or the fact that the initial investigation was launched to begin with? I am not aware of any other investigation that's ever been conducted by police that was closed and then leaked to the press. It's that simple. That's as clear as I can make it. Joe? Mayor, um, I'm not trying to get you to, to, to sleep on them, believe it or not, but um, you say there was a leak. Um, that would be a violation of police officers, both of office. Is it not pretty important that somebody determines what exactly happened and who did it? I think that's for others to decide, not for me. Sure. As leader of the city, it's not for you to, to decide if that's a, a vital thing to find out. Well, as the person who's part of this story, I don't think it's appropriate. If it was somebody else that was part of this story, I think it'd be appropriate for the mayor to call for that. So where does that responsibility lie? If you're accusing yourself more or less from uh, pushing forward for an investigation into what did happen. You know, this, this investigation, if there's an investigation as Joe just described, does anybody really think that, that that's ever gonna come to a conclusion? The press knows who leaked the story, they're not in a position to disclose that. So going around and around in circles and keeping it out in the press isn't gonna get us anywhere. What I'm saying is, I think it's unfortunate that we're here. I think a closed investigation that had no fruition should not have been leaked. I want to move forward with my job. I'm not going to tr keep trying to figure it out. I can't and I won't do that. Anything else? Yes, Cheryl. Cheryl. Um, so you mentioned you want to move forward and repair your relationship with uh, the police chief. Can you give some specific examples of how you're going to go about doing that? Sure. So um, when I, uh, with the former chief, we met on a regular basis once a month um, on a one -on what I call a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we also, he was also part of our cabinet meetings every month. And, um, and so I think that having that continue um, would be important. Uh, trying to have a one-on-one -on -one with Chief Susing to talk about things that are important to us in the city. Um, I think everybody knows that we've had trouble with some burglaries. We've had some trouble areas in the, in the city. Uh, I mentioned earlier a drug house that I really think we should be focusing on. I'm interested in an increased presence in the downtown. Uh, not just because my father was a downtown cop, but because I think it's important. I think it's important uh, that people know that uh, the police are part of their community and feel good about that. I do. Um, and so focusing on those things that we should be able to come together on, getting to know each other a little bit better, building a trust. So you had been having the one-on-ones before with Chief Susan? Not, not the way I would have liked. And how often do you plan to have them now? I would like to do it the same way I do with all the other folks that I work with at least once a month. And I would like to make sure that we come to terms on what are the things that the mayor of the city should know about as they relate to the police. I should know about major crimes. I should know about homicides. With all due respect, I shouldn't read that in the newspaper. Uh, and those are things that I think we have to come to terms on. I'd like to do that. And what is the reason, though, that you hadn't had those one-on-ones? Did you, had you tried to and he wasn't open to that? or? No, we had had one-on-ones. You know, at some point, it just stopped working out. And I think it's because of a lot of the things that I mentioned. Contracts, budgets, you know, there were a lot of things involved. 
There's a whole history of it. Some more public, some not so much, some more administrative. <coughs> what I'm trying to say here today is I'm willing to work with him. He's the police chief, I'm the mayor. People need to expect us to rise above it, and I'm willing to do that. So is it his move now? You didn't give a call, or is this a public invitation, or what's the... I, I, I don't think it'd be a good way to start by making it a public invitation. I will reach out to the police chief. Anything further? Kim? Have you spoken with the police chief since this has, since last Monday when you released your No, I've not. Okay. I appreciate y'all coming today, and I can't tell you what it means to me. The amount of people that have <coughs> reached out to me, that have sent cards and letters and said things to the press, people that have known me my whole life, it means a lot to me to hear such good things from people who know me best. Thanks for coming.